track on with another one. Okay, now this one, you've probably obviously seen the title already and it's, I would guess that most people wouldn't come across this, so I'm very, very intrigued to see what this one's like. Now this was a donation that I only picked up yesterday morning um, from a guy that got in touch with me and I don't actually know how he found out about this. I think it was through um, Joe Ellis uh, on Whiskey Wednesday and if you're not following Joe and if you've not subscribed to Whiskey Wednesday yet, what are you doing? You should be by now because his videos are absolutely fantastic and he's a top bloke. Um, so it was a gentleman called Andrew Butler who um, emailed me to say, look, I've got some samples, I'd love to help out, I'd love to donate. Um, I've got this list, is there anything on it you want? And this list went on forever. And it really was kind of like, well, yes, yes please, yes please, yes please, yes please, yes please, if you could, this would be absolutely fantastic. Um, as luck would have it, he was in York this weekend. Um, he is a member of the Tolkien Society, apparently. Uh, and they had their AGM this weekend in York. So yesterday morning, I went and met him at his hotel where he was staying at and picked up a bag of various miniatures and things like that. And here is a picture of him and me um, during the handover, shall we say. Really nice bloke, really friendly. And um, here is a picture of once I'd got home and unpackaged everything and got everything out, here is a picture of what turned up. 43, I think it was, samples. Um, a lot of them, uh, about half of them are miniatures where he's had miniatures but only had a two and a half CL shot and has given me the rest of it. Um, or a lot of um, kind of sample bottles of um, bottles that he's already opened. Really big into his whiskey, obviously had bucket loads of cash, I guess, to have all these whiskies. But it was an incredible donation, just mind boggling. Um, that many, to donate that many was just unreal, absolutely unreal. Um, now this particular one wasn't actually on the original list. It was, um, he was going to give me a sample of Wolfburn, but it turns out I've got that off Mark, Mormon Mike, ready to go in, uh, in, a, in a while. So he put this one in because he'd only just acquired it. Never heard of it before in my life. So Norval's Sensible Scotch Whiskey. So I've been on to Google and there's not a great deal of information about it apart from Norval's Sensible Scotch Whiskey it website itself, which is a little bit rough around the edges and a little bit rough and ready and needs a bit of work on it to be perfectly honest. But essentially, it's a guy called Ian Norval who, whose great grandfather was a guy called Henry um, who owned an illicit still and in 1857 released what he called sensible whiskey. Now by 1857 illicit stills were no longer illegal and illicit because of the act that had been passed by the king whose name I can't remember and I talked about this in one of the distilleries. Was it Glenlivet? Uh, yeah, Glenlivet. If you go and watch my Glenlivet video that's got all the information there because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, so by 1857, he was actually legal, and what he then did was, um, with his whiskey that was getting quite a good reputation, now his, uh, he lived in a place called Chapelburn uh, near Kakodi, which is here, um, so it's just the other side of the Firth to um, Edinburgh. The fourth of Firth or the Firth? I can't remember which bit's the actual Firth and which is the fourth of Firth, but wherever that bit of water is, it's just the other side of Edinburgh to so that. Um, and he basically went around all the other kind of local, one, what were illicit stills and now were no longer, and was getting stock and blending them together. So this is a blended whiskey. And essentially what Ian's done is, because it's part of his family, he's got the rights to normal, sensible whiskey, he's relaunched it. And I think it was in about 2014 he did this. I found an interview uh, in a magazine where they were talking about this. This was December 2014, and they said he was in the process of reintroducing the brand. So I th I'm going to say 2014 was when this, this relaunched, as it were. So they also have a single Highland, which is a five-year-old single Highland, which is, seems pretty young, but it says five-year-old on the label, so fair play to them for that, for that transparency. So this is the blend. And according to their website, it is two grain whiskies and over 40 malts in it. I can't remember what the other blend was where I said that they had over 40 malts, but it almost seems a bit too much of a coincidence that two of them are saying exactly the same thing. But I'm not saying anything. It just that kind of popped in my head that I've already seen that before somewhere else. So over the 40 single malts, and they also say on the website that they are between three and seven year old single malts. So again, transparency, great to see. Young, be very interesting to see what it's like. It is 40%, yes it is 
But the fact that they're turning around and saying these are three to seven year old whiskies in here, and you know there's two grain whiskies and this is what it is, is brave of them. Unusual. It's risky as well because some people can be put off. Now straight away, as soon as I poured that in and looking at that colour, I'm going to have to say it's got colouring in it. I cannot believe that three to seven year old single malts are going to give you that colour particularly with grain whiskey in there as well. I've, I've, I'm gonna stick my neck out and say this has probably got coloring in. Now, if they wanna do that, that's absolutely fine. If it makes it taste better, not a problem at all. If it tastes like rubbish, I'm not gonna say it's because of the coloring, um, but it just seems to me that that is, is almost too obvious that it's got coloring in. Personal opinion, and if Ian or anybody from the company is watching and they wanna turn around and go, no, that's absolutely not the case, not a problem at all. That's just my personal opinion, straight away from pouring it into the glass. So, now, it does have a nose of what I associate with whiskies that have got the E150A added to it as well. It's a slightly artificial sweetness as well. I'd be interested to know what the percentage of grain to um, single malts are as well, because there is this edge, this metallic-y edginess to it that I associate with grain, and particularly blended whiskies that have got a higher grain percentage as well. But it's it's sweet, but it's a slightly artificial sweet. And slightly petroly, but I think that's the grain element. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. No, it's gone. No. Now apparently it was called sensible to try and give a, a, an indication of having tradition and prestige but not necessarily having the extreme price, um, you know, being priced too high. It was sensible, it was for smart people that didn't want to spend a lot of money but wanted something very good. I'll be honest, there's not a great deal on this. While I'm talking away, it's not really lingering. Again, this artificial sweetness comes through and it's a little bit overpowering. There's not too much of the grain influence in there on the palate particularly. There's not the edginess. There's just, the, there's not a great deal there. There's a slightly kind of apple -y fruitiness to it. There is a caramel, but it's, it's like a cheap sweet caramel. Um, rather than kind of making your own caramel or, you know, Werther's Original that's got richness and depth to it. There's not a great deal on the finish either. Um, yeah, really, it doesn't stick around very long. It's, it's very inoffensive. There's nothing bad about this apart from this slightly, slightly plasticky artificial edge. But it's not overpowering. It's not dominating. It's not going, I am a cheap, crappy whiskey. But there's not really much to it, um, to be perfectly honest. Direct from the website, this is fifteen ninety five a bottle. <laughs> That's probably what I'd expect to pay for it, to be perfectly honest. It's it's on the, the lower end of price for a blended whiskey, and it's kind of on the lower end of quality as well. It's not brilliant. It's not awful. It's not a bad whiskey. but there's very little to it. To be honest, this isn't gonna offend anybody. This, it pro it's probably not really gonna go in cocktails though, because there's not enough to cut through. If you got given that as a present, it's not gonna offend anybody. But to be perfectly honest, well, I'll put, uh, I'll put a picture of the bottle up now, just to give you a bit of a close up. But I think even the packaging needs work, to be perfectly honest, it looks, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great in that packaging. The website needs a bit of work. The website's a bit cheap and cheerful. The, the, the packaging itself looks a bit cheap and cheerful. It looks like a labeling for something like Edinburgh Woolen Mill or, or some kind of family run um, gift shop in a, in a touristy town in the center of Scotland where they're, they're making it themselves. It needs some work. Um, you know, if he's setting himself up I don't know, it, I get the impression that there's not a lot of money behind the business and it needs something to stand out and unfortunately what's in the glass doesn't really stand out.
it's not Hague club levels of nothing, but it's not that far off. It's, yeah, there's just not a great deal to it. And what there is, is unfortunately, there's just this element of E150A caramel coloring coming through and slightly too sweet and just, that's about it. Not great stuff, unfortunately. So yes, it's okay. It's fine. It's 15.95 and if you could find it for a little bit less and you weren't really bothered about what you were drinking or you were gonna give it to somebody as a present knowing that they drink lots of whiskey and they don't really mind what they have and they'll drink it and they'll probably enjoy it, then that's absolutely fine. But I wouldn't go out of my way looking for this, unfortunately. But hey, it was, uh, it was a really kind donation. It was really interesting to see it and find out about it. Um, and hey, look, if somebody out there, if it helps their sales, then, you know, fair enough. Um, right, I shall see you at the next one. Cheers.